Alright, hello guys. In this video, we're going to be talking about the potential for a major Halloween snowstorm for the northeastern and New England states of the United States coming up in just about a week. But before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather related content and also make sure to check out the links in the description for our social medias. Now, there's a disclaimer I need to make, and this is one of those videos that's going to be pretty uh, low confidence. Now, there's a lot of different things that can happen here, and this is a good example of what my channel is about and what my channel was founded on. My channel, what I bring that's different to the table, I feel like I bring this different to the table, is I will talk about these low chance events and give you guys information that nobody else is really going to give you because I don't really care if it's a forecast or if I'm just sharing model guidance with you guys. I'm just letting you guys know that there is a chance of this happening and I do have a little bit of a map at the end of the potentials and kind of how I feel about different regions and their chances of getting different types of precipitation and snowfall and different things like that so definitely stay tuned for that but without further ado this one's going to be super action-packed so make sure to grab a drink grab a snack sit down and enjoy the video now first things first we're looking at noah's probabilities their 8 to 14 day hazard probability map and this is one that you don't really see a lot but they do make this product it's deep within their website it's a it's really hard to find stuff like this sometimes but we see on our precipitation hazards here in the green area, we have a you know risk of heavy precipitation there from Providence up through Boston and all of coastal uh, New England, basically, there. But in that blue, you can see from Maine down through the all of New Hampshire and Vermont, a lot of New York there, northern Connecticut, and a lot of Massachusetts as well. Boston's right on the southern side of that blue. You can see the blues within the green. You can kind of see through it, so keep that in mind as well. Uh, that's where we're looking at frozen precipitation chance. So Noah also has seen the chance for this to happen. So I'm not just, you know, pulling this out of thin air. Let's move up to our upper air analysis here. Now, the thing I like to talk about first off, there's different styles of going about this. I start from the very top layers and work my way down. That's how I've always done it. And the top layers are the most simplified and you can kind of figure it out very, very easily. And then the bottom layers get a lot more harder to understand and they kind of are the ones that flip flop a lot more. So our upper air, this is all you need to know. You can see over Virginia, there's a fork. If you look from east to west, there's a fork. All these winds are heading from west to east, so I don't mean to confuse you, but there is a fork if you're looking from the east to the west, and there's one that goes north or kind of even, and then there's one that dips south. The one that dips south is called our southern jet. That's what we usually refer to it as, and this is the one that really brings a lot of that tropical moisture up. Our northern one is our northern jet, and north of there is usually where we see very, very cold temperatures. Now, when these two combine like they do on this picture here, uh, it looks to be a pretty potent setup where we get a lot of moisture and a lot of cold. And this is where we like to see, you know, good chances at pretty major snowstorms here. So keep in mind, this is a Canadian model model run that came out on October 22nd, which is two days ago. And this is one of the most major model runs for this event that I've seen so far. And I want to show you that the GFS, even though it's not showing quite as much right now, isn't too far off from this previous model run that showed on the Canadian, a lot of snow. <clears throat> now, let's look at our precipitation type. You can see there is something brewing down there off of the coasts of Texas and Louisiana. We see a lot of precipitation brewing out there as long as along the east coast. Our cold out there from Chicago, basically westward, is headed eastward. This is for October 29th. Let's move on one, though, and you can see that cold is moving even further east as it's liking to set in, but we see a lot more precipitation building for the southeastern United States, and this is our potential snowstorm building up at this point. Let's move on one more to midday on October 30th, and you can see we definitely have a low-pressure system developing over Georgia and South Carolina there, but there's precipitation all the way from the Gulf of Mexico up through coastal mid-Atlantic. We have plenty of precipitation in place, and that cold is only moving further and further eastward as it's over the Great Lakes now. Let's move on another one to the 30th, the night of the 30th, heading into Halloween morning, and you can see we do have a coastal low pressure system just offshore of New Jersey and tons of precipitation along the East Coast with snow starting to mix in for Ohio, upstate New York, and uh, interior Maine as well. But let's head 
into even later in the morning on Thursday, October 31st, which again is Halloween morning. And you can see we're getting even more widespread and even deeper blues there, indicating heavier and more widespread snow occurring there for a lot of the interior northeast. Now, I don't think this is the coldest it could possibly be. I think we could be looking at an even snowier solution potentially. But you can see our low pressure system is located just offshore of Maine, and it's quite an intense one. This would certainly be the closest thing we've seen to a snowstorm for the Northeast so far this year. And you can see by 12Z, which is going to be pretty much mid-morning or heading towards noontime on Halloween, we have widespread thro snow throughout interior Northeast and New England. Notice snow showers appearing for a lot of Pennsylvania and New York there at the end of it. That's going to be crucial to note. And we still see those occurring by time we're in the afternoon of Halloween. Also, notice there's a lot of lake effect going on, which I'm also taking into account. Here's your snowfall total with the Canadian model run here from the 22nd through November 1st, which is when I'm expecting this event to pretty much be done with. The day after Halloween will pretty much be said and done. Uh, we see a lot of those pinks indicating 6 to 12 inches of snow, pretty much possible for interior New England, as well as the Adirondack Mountains of New York, and some of those... Uh, lake effect regions just to the southwest of the Finger Lakes. You can see there is a little bit of pink and purple showing up indicating three to maybe nine inches of snow for those regions. I do think that this could come a bit east because our low pressure system was very, very far west on this model run. So if the low pressure system slows down a little bit and then we see the cold even further and further east and then the low pressure system hugs just next to that cold air, we could be looking at a more, you know, a more impactful snowstorm here. And that's why I think NOAA has that potential for frozen precipitation all the way from Boston northward in New England. This is this definitely has the potential to shape up a lot more intense than this. But again, the chances are more slim than typical, and that's why I had the disclaimer in the beginning of the video. But I do like to keep you guys informed with, you know, even low chance events. Let's move on to today's GFS model run so we can compare the differences. Notice we do have this fork in the two areas of air masses we have our northern jet that doesn't really reach the east coast here yet because this is from the 30th the morning of the 30th and we have our second uh jet stream here down south but it doesn't really connect with that northern jet which is what you would want to see you'd want to see it connect and we're not really seeing that let's move on to the morning early early morning time of halloween and you can see there's really it's just not looking as favorable for sure it's not connecting as well. You can see our low pressure system is well offshore of North Carolina, and that trough just isn't looking quite as good on today's GFS 6Z model run. Let's move on one more to the evening time, and again, just not looking very good. Our low pressure system is well offshore of New England, and then that jet stream, you know, we're not really seeing a huge trough in the east, so this isn't setting up to be extremely favorable whatsoever on the GFS. We're still 180 hours out, and that's why I'm kind of mentioned the fact that this could really go in any direction. This could become less favorable and this could become far more favorable where we're looking at, you know, a really good chance at a snowstorm for Halloween. And we've seen events, we've seen snowstorm events as early as Halloween before. I mean, way further south than this. I remember, I think 2011 or 2010, we saw a Halloween snowstorm that brought snow throughout Pennsylvania, throughout New England. So it is certainly possible this time of year. We just need to see this setup and, you know, improve. Let's look at October 29th, the surface map here, or the precipitation map on the GFS. Now, again, we're looking at the bottom layers at this point, and really, uh, our cold air just isn't really getting in place soon enough, and our precipitation is there, so this isn't too bad of a look, but let's move on to the 30th, and you can see that precipitation is just staying well offshore, and that cold hasn't even arrived yet. We're going to move on one more to 0Z, uh, Thursday, or this is going to be Wednesday night, 0Z, so kind of like 10 p.m. the day before Halloween. And we really see those the cold air moving in by this point. But again, the precipitation just isn't connecting, and we're not really seeing that precipitation connect well enough. Uh, and by the 31st, so this is when our snowstorm on that, on that Canadian run I showed you was really pumping snow into the New England states. We don't even see any precipitation in the area besides a little bit of lake effect action going on. So... 
All that really needs to happen is this thing needs to trend a little bit west and we have a major event. Uh, and that's not unheard of. We see this happen a lot. People that obviously don't know weather, like probably a lot of my viewers don't really look at models themselves or pay attention to how they work. They're just taking people's word for it. Uh, and, you know, you you might I might be wrong. Maybe a lot of you do understand models, but these models run to run to run. We can see them tick 100 miles west every single time for four runs in a row, especially in the wintertime. And then eventually we're looking at a major snow event for the Northeast. And that's what we were looking at two days ago. So just as fast as it trended towards this that we're seeing now, it could trend back. And we have tons and tons of days. We have about a week for this thing to trend around and uh, turn into any sort of storm it wants to be, basically. So very, very interesting setup. And I think we're going to have to talk about this one in a separate video again, because uh, we're, this one just gives me, I don't know, it gives me the vibe that we're going to be looking at a little bit of an event here at some point. Now, you can see that on Halloween night, this is the temperatures we're going to be looking at. So there's certainly enough cold in place for a lot of regions. Again, this is just the surface uh, air temperature. We could be looking at snow with temperatures upward of, you know, 38 degrees as long as the upper air is cold enough. So, you know, you don't have to be in the blue here to see snow obviously, but you definitely, if you are in the blue, would be seeing a good chance of snow if there was precipitation. Now let's look at my map that I made here, where this is going to be three layers, so I'm going to show you one layer at a time. Our first layer is this white layer that extends from Cleveland up through Buffalo, through Syracuse, into Scranton, and in New York City, and everywhere to the north and east of those regions. Basically, this is a region where we're looking at low chance for a, an event, you know, low chance at that snow event that's going to bring a lot of accumulating snow, with the exception of some lake effect bands that I think could extend from Cleveland up through Buffalo up through uh, Watertown. All three of those regions could be looking at, and everywhere in between, could be looking at lake effect snow that could be major, uh, but that's really hard to pick, you know, forecast this far out, so we're not really going to talk about that yet. But lower chance slash snow showers are pretty much what's going to be the trend for these areas for now. We're going to have to see where things move. Now, our second region here, this blue region from just to the east of Scranton and just to the north of New York City, uh, this includes uh, Albany, Burlington, Boston, Portland, Bangor, Halton. All of these regions are still a low chance, but it could be major if we do think, see things set up. So this is the areas that I think would be really the best chance for potentially seeing an actual snowstorm out of this. And then our third shade here, this purple color that basically has Burlington and Holton with a lot of other regions in there, but those are the only written regions I have in the purple. There's a moderate chance at seeing snow and it could be major just like the blue area. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to share this with your friends and family if they do live in these regions or if you do think that they will find this video to be useful or informative. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.